Hi, welcome back to HowToAV.TV. We're on the Avixa stand over at ISE 2020, joined by a per person from uh, Williams AV. And Per, you've been talking about assistive listening, yes. um, doing one of the education sections. So let's talk about what assistive listening is. Uh, we have a little bit of experience, let's say, in induction okay, loops. Sure. But there are also other options. There's infrared out there, there's RF. Mm -hmm. Explain to us, first of all, very quickly, for those who don't know, what's an induction loop and how does it work? Sure, so induction loop is probably the technology that's been around the longest for assistive listening. From about 1937, I believe, was the first induction loop. So the idea is really through um, a magnetic field transferring audio from a presenter and into a user's hearing aid directly. So it's a very good technology for the user. You get the audio you need for your specific hearing loss and you don't need to borrow a receiver, you can use your own hearing aid. So we're using an induction loop uh, as a, a wireless transmission exactly. and then using the hearing aid as, as a receiver, yeah? Exactly, yes. yes. Okay, so induction loops are probably the most conventional and the one that we will see the most. But there are also other technologies that we're seeing more of. We're seeing RF and we're seeing yes. infrared. How do they differ? So one of the kind of challenges with an induction loop is you need to install and to do a proper job um, quite a bit of cable in the floor, under a carpet. So especially for retrofits or when there is a limited budget, that can be a challenge here for the venue as well as for the integrator. So RF and IR both have the um, advantage that they are a bit more economical often, especially when you consider the installation time. So explain to us what RF is for those who don't know and then IR. And so RF, radio frequency or FM, frequency modulation, is a wireless transmission technology. Basically, as your radio you might listen to if you're our age or older. I don't think the young kids do anymore. Um, but basically it's a localized radio signal going from a transmitter to the user and one of the differences compared to loop is you need to have a specific FM receiver. So think about it as your radio, right? You borrow a receiver which transfers the audio into your ears. And that is slightly different with that receiver because that doesn't link directly to, an, to a, a hearing aid, is that right, right? exactly. So you have two options. You can either use headphones or you can use a neck loop that will then transfer the audio into a magnetic field and then into your hearing aid. So a two-step process, if you would. And then infrared is a different technology again, of course, using light rather than radio frequency. Right. Why, why would we go to an IR instead of an RF or an induction loop? So one of the big benefits with infrared is, you know, if you have a wall and you try to shoot light through it, that usually doesn't work, right? So it's the same principle with infrared light. If you have a wall, it stops, which is beneficial where you have a confidentiality concern. So one of the big um, customers of infrared technology is courtrooms, because if you have a secret case, you don't want people to listen in. Cinemas um, are keen on using IR as well because they're always concerned about being recorded and things like that. And it also takes the problems of crossover right, out as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, yeah. so they're the three conventional technologies that I'm slightly aware of. There. Right. But what you've been talking about is new digital technologies? Yes, exactly. So there's a couple. Well, I can mention first that there's been a lot of in advancement in the traditional technologies since 1937, which we're happy to hear. Um, and, you know, there's digital options for Dante inputs, uh, network control, even the IR LEDs are much more efficient these days, basically covering a larger area at the lower energy um, and investment cost. Newer technologies, Wi-Fi has been around for a few years now, um, probably entering the assistive listening space about five years ago. And the benefit with Wi-Fi is, is to bring your own device technology. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have some of the benefits from the loop systems in that you can use your own technology but installation wise um, you don't have to pull up the floor and um, have that effort so and when you talk about using your own device what would that device be that would be a mobile phone that would be the typical we could send the 
um, really to a laptop or any kind of device, but the typical use is, is your cell phone. So this technology maybe caters a little bit to um, a slightly younger generation, um, but even over the past five years, obviously the adoption of cell phones has been tremendous. So what used to be kind of a new technology for younger people is now widely adopted by, by most people in society, obviously. Okay, now I think you're also talking about Bluetooth as well. Yeah, um, so Bluetooth, um, you know, is widely adopted, uh, especially in the consumer space. One of the specifics of Bluetooth is basically one-to-one -one connection per profile. So if you have an audio connection, you can typically only connect one device to your phone, um, which is not great if you're doing a presentation in the church, for example, and you have 10 people who need hearing assistance. Now, the uh, Bluetooth SIG, the development group, just here in January, they um, adopted a new standard, Bluetooth 5.1 that is introducing broadcast audio. So what that means is you could potentially have one Bluetooth transmitter sending um, audio to a lot of people needing assistive listening, for example. So if, if we think about assistive listening systems and um, I guess one of the problems with induction loops is the complexity uh, of, of, of designing a system, sure. particularly if you've got multiple systems. Uh, another one of, of the issues to consider is interference maybe of signals um, and the other is you talked about is security. So is the one technology therefore that is best? You know it's really situation dependent. Again um, hearing loops have a big benefit that they are quite easy to use now, if it's properly installed, which can be a challenge, you want to work with a uh, integrator who knows their stuff and um, certainly there's a number of different manufacturers that produce good products, but it's with anything, right? If it's not implemented correctly, it's not going to be good. So that's why I think hearing loops will be around to stay, um, you know, FM or IR products are really easy. Um, to install, but as a user, you have to go to a counter, you have to borrow a receiver, it's not very discreet. Wi Fi, as we mentioned, has some wonderful benefits. Bring your own device, and you know, again, everybody has a cell phone these days. Because that's just me with a cell phone and, and my earbuds in, isn't it? Right, it's exactly. So discreet. Yeah. Yeah. It's very discreet. Uh, AV and IT industries are obviously converging a lot but I think there's still a lot of learning to be done in certain spaces it is a live audio feed with limited buffering so you need to be knowledgeable about IT technology so there's pros and cons with all of the technologies I think Bluetooth as I mentioned has a lot of promise but yeah. it's not happening yet so you know the future will tell and again, maybe something else will come along. You know, we're seeing implantable technologies, so maybe there will be transmission directly from a transmitter right into your ear. I mean, that's somewhat what's happening with cochlear implants already. Yeah, yeah. So maybe one step will be skipped in the future. So if assistive listening system is new to you, if you're adding that to your portfolio of uh, technologies and systems that you install, making the right choice, what should we consider? I'm, I'm sure that scale is something and a number of users is something. What, yes. what would you put on that list to consider? Um, I think one thing to consider is it new construction, greenfield in that case. Uh, Induction loop is always a good option. Is it something where it's a retrofit, then you already have um, a building there? Is it something historical where you can't make too many change, changes? In that case, you probably want to go RF, IR, or Wi-Fi. Um, confidentiality, the easy solution to that is always infrared. Um, Wi-Fi might be a more future uh, yeah. forward technology. And I think there's also um, um, one thing to consider, there's a few combination options out in the market where you can combine, for example, infrared and Wi-Fi. 
which could potentially give you the best of both worlds. You have something that's very easy to install, um, an easy receiver, but you also have a bring your own device option for the people who, who prefer that. But I, I think it's, it's true to say that with all of the assistive listening manufacturers out there like yourselves, you aren't limited to one of those platform technologies, are you? So pretty yes. much all of the manufacturers have a number of options and, and probably yeah. the best way to choose the right platform, the right system, and to get the system right is to talk to the manufacturers, to the, the distributors. You've got some great software yes. tools out there, a lot yeah. of the manufacturers, yeah? The manufacturers, our dealers, our distributors have access to software tools. We can give you advice on what's the situation, the number of users, what type of venue, what's important to you, and and make a recommendation. And let's just finish off by why this is so important. There are a growing number of regulations there about assistive living, yeah. um, about supporting people with disabilities, mm -hmm. which is uh, obviously important to designing a quality commercial building with public right. access. But more importantly for, for the end client perhaps, is you are actually opening it up to a wider audience sure. yeah. and providing a better product, providing uh, a better service, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no, and uh, I think it's interesting. So our company was founded in 1976 where the legislation was not strong, especially not in the United States where we're based. And it was really based on, you know, people in churches and other venues trying to help people, making sure that they could literally hear the message. And um, both my parents are actually hard of hearing and I know that they will make decisions based on where there is a proper assistive listening system. So you're really shutting people out if you're not able to, uh, to cater to their needs and take care of them. So I, I think it's a fun place in the industry to be because we and uh, the people who work with us are, are in general doing something good opens up a whole new market for the installers, mm -hmm. opens up a much wider audience, a much wider customer base for, for the end users. If you've got any questions on what the right assistive technology is, drop it in the comments below. We'll take a look at it. If we don't know the answers, we'll get hold of Per and he'll have some more great information for us. Thank you for joining us, Per. Thank How you very be? much. Yeah, it was Talk a pleasure. You.